Romney of Utah. Senator, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Good to be with you. Senator, do you support holding this impeachment trial, and what do you think the rules should be on the length of the trial and whether or not to call witnesses? Well, we're, cer we're certainly going to have a trial. Uh, I, I wish that weren't necessary, but the, the president's conduct with regards to the call, the Secretary of State Raffensperger in Georgia, uh, as well as the incitation towards the insurrection uh, that led to the attack on the Capitol, uh, calls for a trial. And, uh, uh, you know, if we're going to have uh, unity in our country, I think it's important to recognize the need for accountability, uh, for truth and justice. So I think there will be a trial, and I hope it goes as quickly as possible, but that's up to the council on both sides. You were the only Senate Republican to vote to convict and remove the president the first time. Of course, now as a juror again, I'm sure you want to hear the evidence. But I want to put up what you said on January 6th, the day that the mob attacked the U.S. Capitol. Here's, here's what you said. We gathered today due to a selfish man's injured pride what happened here today was an insurrection incited by the President of the United States. Senator, it, it sure sounds like you're going to vote to convict. Well, there's no question but that the article of impeachment that was sent over by the House uh, suggests impeachable conduct. But we have not yet heard, either from the prosecution or for the, from the defense, I'll get a chance to hear from them. And I will do my best as a Senate juror to apply justice as well as I can understand it. You uh, also, I'm sure, have read that there was a report over the weekend that President Trump was talking seriously at one point in December about firing the acting attorney, uh, attorney general of the United States, putting in a new acting attorney general who supported the idea of trying to get Georgia to overturn its election results. Do you think that should be part of the trial? Well, that'll be up to the prosecutors, of course, but I think it's pretty clear that, that uh, over the, the last year or so, there has been an effort to corrupt the election in the United States, and it was not by President Biden, it was by President Trump. And that, uh, that corruption we saw with regards to the conduct in Ukraine, as well as the call to Secretary of State Raffensperger, uh, as well as the, the incitation to uh, insurrection. I mean, th th this is obviously very serious uh, and an attack on, our, on the very foundation of our democracy. It is something which has to be considered and resolved. There is talk among some Senate Republicans about ending this trial on a procedural ground, whether it's even constitutional to try a president who's already left office uh, and not even get to the issue of President Trump's innocence or guilt. How would you feel about that, trying to end this trial on this constitutional issue? Well, the Democrats have the majority in the Senate, and I doubt that they're going to go along with that move. Uh, at the same time, if you look at the preponderance of the opinion, legal opinion, not by people who are partisan, but by uh, scholars over the years about whether an impeachment trial can and should be held after someone has left office, the preponderance of opinion is that, in fact, yes, an impeachment trial is appropriate after someone leaves office, uh, and that's something I concur with. Uh, but again, I will listen to the uh, arguments that are made by counsel on both sides to make a final determination. In his inaugural address on Wednesday, President Biden made a call for unity. Here is some of that. We must end this uncivil war that pits red against blue, rural versus urban, or, or rural versus urban, conservative versus liberal. Now, some of your Republican colleagues, including Marco Rubio, who's going to be on in the next segment, say that, that President Biden has already breached that call for unity with some of his actions, executive actions, legislative agenda in the opening days. Do you see an inherent conflict between calling for unity and a new president pursuing his agenda? 
Well, I, I think it would be uh, unrealistic to assume that uh, that Democrats and Republicans are going to see eye to eye on every issue. Uh, there are going to be differences of opinion. Uh, that's expected. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's appropriate for us to have unity of, of purpose, unity of heart, uh, a recognition that we respect each other and treat each other uh, with comity. And, and that is something which I believe President Biden wants to see. A at the same time, I think there are some actions the president is taking that, uh, that are going to lead to some anger and division. I think, for instance, saying we're not going to allow further leases on, on government land for oil and gas, uh, that obviously very badly hurts some of our rural communities. Uh, stopping the Keystone Pipeline, uh, that puts a lot of people out of work. Those people are going to be understandably angry. So I think you've got to be uh, pretty careful, even recognizing uh, the, the bounds of disagreement, uh, to, to not do things that, that incite a great deal of unnecessary anger. Let, let me ask you about another pressing issue, maybe the most single pressing issue, and that's COVID. Uh, you have said that after the Congress passed a $900 billion COVID relief package just last month, that you don't have much interest in passing another Biden rescue plan for $1.9 trillion, more than double what you just passed. Are there some parts of the Biden rescue plan that you could support? Well, I think that's very possible. Uh, last time around, a bipartisan coalition came together to look at the needs of the American people and came up with the $900 billion plus uh, plan. Uh, we'll listen to uh, representatives of the White House today uh, to understand their perspective. But uh, if there are places that we missed in our proposal, we're happy to uh, pick that up. Uh, the, the president wants to extend unemployment benefits. If people are still unemployed, that certainly is something we'd look at. Uh, we were uh, of the view last time that states needed help, uh, some rescue for states and localities that may have suffered a reduction in their revenues. That's appropriate. But the total figure is, is pretty uh, uh, shocking, if you will. And, uh, and the idea that we need a stimulus is a little hard to understand because I, I'm one of those that's convinced that if you want to see this economy get going, we got to get beyond COVID. If we get beyond COVID, I believe that the economy is going to come roaring back and spending and borrowing trillions of dollars from the Chinese, among others, is not necessarily the best thing we can do to get our economy to be strong long term. Finally, Senator, you were flying from Utah to D.C. on January 5th, the day before the attack on the Capitol, when some people who don't particularly like your stand, particularly when it comes to Donald Trump, went after you. Here's an example of that. When Trump gets reelected, you're getting primaried. <laughs> Laugh it up. Well, Laugh it up. Where is the GOP now, Senator? What's, what is the balance between the, the tr uh, traditional Republicans and the Trump Republicans? And what do you think is the key to where your party goes over the next few years? Well, first, I'd note that there are going to be uh, new faces that are going to be the spokespeople for our party and their own vision. And, and that could be Larry Hogan. It could be uh, uh, Charlie Baker. It could be uh, Marco Rubio, who's going to be on in the moment, or Ben Sass. Uh, so there, there'll be some new faces. Uh, President Trump, of course, will continue to have influence. Uh, but I think our party is going to return to some of our more fundamental principles, which is fiscal responsibility, uh, believing in the importance of character, standing with our allies and pushing it back against people like Kim Jong-un and, and Vladimir Putin. Uh, but I also think it's important to recognize a new strain in our party that's critical, and that is to communicate more effectively to working men and women in our country that our policies are best designed to help them and to give them and their families a better future. That's something I think we've we've missed. That's something I missed in my campaign. I think that's something that's going to help define us going forward. Senator Romney, thank you. Thanks for your time this week. It's always good to talk to you, sir. Thanks, Chris. Good to be with you.